scuffle. You're looking at me, Dino. We're losing adrenaline. It's about this time of year when Mr. Winter knocks on your door and says, Good evening, I'm here to stay for a couple of months. Get the kettle on, love. But on tonight's show, me and the angels are going to warm the nation's cockles as we dip our toes into the murky world of interpersonal relationships. First, though, we're going to crash some cars in our initial challenge. So it's over to Games Master. This challenge is perfect for the more lily-livered. Ignore the fact that it's on the awesome destruction derby. It's all about running away. A host of cars will be attempting to crash in on our young drivers, whose task it is to keep out of trouble and keep their car on the road for as long as possible. Damage is indicated by lights on the diagram of the player's car in the bottom right of the screen. A black light indicating that if you take one more hit in that area, it's curtains. And remember, kids, if you even think about trying that at home with your mum and dad's car, you are a total trouser. Unlike our first two contestants today, please welcome Roxanne Kala and Ryan Brent. Welcome, Roxanne. Hi. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks. OK, now, Roxanne, you were asked if you could set the Games Master anywhere, where would you set it? And you said Barbados. Why Barbados? Because it'd be really hot and all the celebrities would want to come on it because it'd be really hot and they'd get free holiday. But all the celebrities want to come on the show anyway. Do they? Last year we had Robocop Did you? on the show. That's how much they want to come on. We get everybody. Uh, Ryan, now you had a bizarre experience at uh, Thorpe Park, that big amusement park, didn't you? What happened? Oh, yeah, when I was little, um, this Indian bloke, he came up to me and kissed me on the hand. For any particular reason? No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was just at Foot Park and he kissed me on the hand and right. I just ran off crying. And you probably had to queue two hours for him to do that as well. Right, OK, while well, Ryan and Roxanne clunk and clip for this special trip, we'll take a look at this week's news. Why, only last week, Jimmy Sega said, come to my house for an exclusive preview of three games that can save the ailing Saturn. I was at my mum's, so plucky scamp Steve Pritchard went along to see if three arcade conversions will quite literally stem the flood of PlayStation purchasing punters. We all thought Sega Rally could possibly take a large hanky and wipe the smiles from PlayStation owners playing Wipeout. But what about Stevie Boy? What did he think of this super-fast racing game scrolling landscape burning rubber fest? The playability and the graphics are still there and it's just minus the cabinet. Next, he placed his eyes on the conversion of Virtua Cop. It comes with gun and the practice mode, where bad blokes with rancid armpits appear at random for extra playability. You should be shooting games after you've completed them. You don't really want to play them again after that, but Virtua Cop is really hard. Finally, we got to sample the first playable version of hopeful Tekken toppler Virtua Fighter 2. It's only 60% complete, but Steve saw enough to believe it will be in the shops at Christmas, screaming, ho, 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 buy me for a good time. I did think that the conversions of these games would be good from the arcade. However, I did not expect them to be perfect, which is what they seem to be. And with shops knocking 50 quid off the Saturn price, PlayStation faces may be slightly smacked. Ryan Brent and Roxanne Carla are about to play Destruction Derby. Help me out is the family's favourite, Dave Perry. Dave, do you mind if I call you Ace for this challenge? No, not at all. Most people do. OK, then, Ace, tell us, what's the biggest problem our contestants are going to face in this? Well, we've got it set on total destruction, which means that all 20 computer-controlled cars are going to head straight for our opponents, which means they might get jammed against the barriers. The way to get out of that is to remember you can use reverse gear as well as forwards, and as the front end of the car is the most vulnerable part, using reverse isn't a bad idea. OK, thanks very much, Dave. Basically, whichever one of our contestants can last the longest without their car getting smashed to smithereens will emerge glorious. Ryan's going to go first. Best of luck, Ryan. Start your engines. 
So we can see in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, this is the indicator which tells you how much damage the car has taken. The lights are green just now, which means it hasn't actually been hit, but that is all about to change. And there he is, stuck in the, in the side immediately. Yep. Here again. they all come, all 20 of them will come piling into him now. This can work to his advantage, because they can provide a shield and actually take some of the impact off him, but mostly they'll just smash the spark plugs out of him. OK, we can see some of the lights are going to... Now, that's black, a black light at the side of the car there, Dave. Is that going to be a problem? That's bad news. It's not so bad on the side. If he gets a black light on the front end, it could be critical, because the front end's where the engine is, and if that goes, you're in big trouble. OK, as we go for just about 30 seconds. Now, this is quite an interesting tactic, just lapping around the outside, Dave. Is that a good one to use? It's a good one to use. It confuses the cars for a while. They soon latch onto it, and they all come around and catch up with you, but they expect you to be going forward, so if you go backwards, it's not bad. Catches them off guard. OK, 43 seconds gone. A couple more black lights. Oh, there's a couple of flashing red lights at the front there, Dave. Now, this is serious. Yeah, flashing red light, that means they'll be going black very, very soon, and at the front end, Obviously, that can be extremely dangerous. Oh, that's, and that's it, it indeed. Gone. That's it. The front end gone. Ryan lasts for 53 seconds. Ryan, please make way for Roxanne. 53 seconds, David. Would you say that was an easy time to beat? 53 seconds is about an, a competent time, really. It's an average time. OK, that's fine. I'm sure if Ryan wants to give you a bit of a kicking after uh, <laughs> saying that, I'm sure you'll feel free to later on. OK, then, Roxanne, start your challenge. So, of course, Roxanne in the by now familiar customary red the Games Master car. It's a lovely car, isn't it? It's a fantastic piece of automobile, it has to be said. OK, seven seconds gone. No, oh, no, we're getting caught in the side. Yeah, caught in the side again, and here. they're all over. Now, this is very, very difficult. She's got to get out of there. She's got to get there. She's going, she's going. Nice there, driving. She's going forward. Oh, I've got to get this. She might be out now. Like I said, by going forwards, the problem with that is when you hit things, you hit them in the engine, and that causes you problems. But she's now doing she's, that reverse now. But she's lost some control, can you see? She can't straighten herself up. Because if you look down at the graph at the bottom right hand corner of the car, she's in big trouble and she's lost the steering. Oh, that's another smack on the front again this time. Now she's going through the middle. Is that a good idea? Not a good idea because they'll come from all angles and they'll hit you on they every side. Are. It's 38 seconds gone. This is not looking Both too of the good. sides of her car have gone now and, and the front end's flashing. Wall. She's all over the shop there. 45 she, seconds gone. She is, but she's very close. She's she's very close. 56, 53 seconds is what she's got to beat. She's stuck there, but she's they are providing a shield. They're seconds, providing 52. a shield. 53, she's going to do it. She's done it, she's done it. Roxanne has done it. Roxanne is the winner. Well done, Roxanne. Bad luck, Ryan. Ryan, talk me through your 53 seconds then. Well, I started off good, going around the outsides. Good tactic, wasn't... Wasn't quite good enough in the end, though. All the cars started piling onto you, yeah? Smashing into my bonnet, I couldn't do anything. Was that more or less frightening than when that Indian bloke kissed your hand at Thought Park? More frightening than that. Even more frightening than that. Yes. Well, I apologise for the experience. I hope it wasn't been too traumatic for you, Ryan. Roxanne, talk us through it. At one point, I thought you'd blown it. Yeah, so did I, because all the cars kept on crashing. But then there were so many of them surrounding me, they couldn't bump me no more. And then I just that had... shield, didn't Yeah, it? I just had to last for another four seconds, and I did. And that was it. That was mm. very, very smart. And that means that Roxanne is the winner of the Gordon Games Master Joystick. <laughs> Right now, some other video game shows have their reviews done by small children, others have them done by machines. With Dave and Rick, we found the perfect medium. So let's enjoy that cosy warm glow in today's reviews. The World Wrestling Federation is living proof that unpopular kids at school never grow up. They simply put on tights and a mask and fight blokes in rings. This PlayStation version, though, looks to be the first that's any good. The reason it's been doing so well is because it has huge digitised sprites and also because it uses an abundance of special moves usually associated with games like beat-em-up. It also features all the current superstars of World Wrestling Federation. But it's also got Doink the Clown, whose special move is to thwack your opponent quite mercilessly with a huge hammer that, he app that appears in his hand at certain points. So even if you don't like the World Wrestling Federation, you think it's all a bit fake, all a bit choreographed, you're probably going to find this game a whole lot more real and a whole lot more fun. Finally, Vector Man on the Mega Drive features a bloke who's quite literally a load of balls. Not too much problem for Dave and Rick to talk about this one then. 
Vexman is made up of a number of balls, which allow for very fluid animation and allow him to morph easily into a number of shapes, like pickaxes. He also has a very big gun, and that tells you what kind of game this is. This is a shoot-em-up. It's a very big shoot-em-up, but it's a very ordinary shoot-em-up. The graphics are impressive, but we have seen them before. Remember Ecstatica and Balls, the Mega Drive game that came out last year? But even though it is very polished, it's still a tired old genre, and it certainly doesn't breathe new life into the old Mega Drive. More a little puff. Now let's open the door of Studio Event House, in which we test the romantic compatibility of a fictional celebrity couple. It's lovely, and it's called Mr and Mrs. To take part in this event, we needed a celebrity couple willing to come on and lay bare the most intimate details of their private life for the consumption of you, our 100 million viewers. Well, amazingly, we found that couple. Please welcome Emmerdale's golden pair, Biff and Linda, Stuart Wade and Tanisha Geronimo. Welcome, Denisha. Okay, first things first, my mother is an enormous Emmerdale fan. If you could just give a little wave to her and camera three to Paula. Hello, Paula. Hello, Paula. That's what I see. Top son, fantastic son there. <laughs> okay, right, Stuart, in the show, Biff, bit of a ladies' man to begin with. Are you like that at all in real life? <clears throat> in the biblical sense. In whatever sense you like. <laughs> um, no, no, no. That's why I enjoy playing it. Yeah, and uh, I'm with you and Tanisha in real life. Uh, how do you go on? Have you ever had an emotional relationship? Yeah, you know, I really hate him, in fact. I mean, the fact that I've had to come up here today is just an absolute nightmare, really, so isn't it? Do yeah. Oh. Oh. And, uh, oh. <laughs> no. oh, I've heard those words myself, Stuart, sure. many, many times. <laughs> no, he's lovely. He's lovely, aren't you? Hmm. OK, Tanisha <laughs> Geronimo, can I say, first of all, that is the most beautiful name Oh, well, I've thank you very ever much. Heard. I'm, like, I'm shamelessly flirting here, by the way, but I have to say that. <laughs> and now, I did read that you are a big fan of Kenny Rogers. Yes. Now, see, the thing is, some of our viewers may be a bit young to have heard of the Kenster. Could you describe exactly what it is he does and why he's so fantastic? He has got to be the best country and western singer ever have lived. And he's so gorgeous, you won't believe. He beats Take That Hands Down. Right. Tell you, really. And he is actually 107 years old, though. Mm. Uh, yes. That's what's so appealing, I think. <laughs> OK, yeah. then, right. Well, young people all over Britain kickstart that Kenny Rogers revival. We'll take a quick break. Welcome back. We're joined tonight by Stuart Ware and Tanisha Geronimo, Emmerdale's Biff and Linda. We're going to take their relationship, hold it up to the light, and take a little peek underneath and see if we can find any flaws in it. The main event will be on a Saturn game called Bug, but we're going to kick this off with a smart wee arcade gem called Cupid. I don't often go to pubs, but on the rare occasions that I do, I've been intrigued by the relationship tester, Cupid. Each partner takes it in turn to answer a series of intimate, multiple-choice questions. Cupid then compares the answers and tells the couple how compatible they are. Charming. Okay, Tanisha will be answering the questions. First of all, obviously, we don't want Stuart to have an inkling of a response, so he's been earmuffed up by the angels over there. Listen to some Kenny Rogers, by the looks of it. So, uh, right, Tanisha, then, let's go to the first question. Right. Okay, so the first question, Tanisha, one night you have to babysit, what do you do with the kids? A, leave them alone and go to time with your friends, send them straight to bed and watch TV, or watch a Disney movie together and read them a bedtime story. What do you reckon? I think I'm going to go for C. Watch the Disney movie? Yeah, I think I have to because I'm really into Disney. That's lovely. So. That's a very nice answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, next question. One night you find a kitten meowing at your door. It do was you? Do you <laughs> it's my famous kitten impression there. Do you kick him away and shut the door, bring him to the RSPCA, or fall in love with him immediately and bring him into the house? Well, seeing as I play a vet, I think I'd have to um, bring him in and fall madly in love with him. Okay. Right, next question then. Are you faithful? Always, I try to be, but it's difficult. Oh, right for the always there, no <laughs> hesitation. Always, no hesitation. At all. <laughs> right, Tanisha, what's your idea of a perfect Saturday night? An expensive meal followed by a trip to the theatre. That's a fantastic evening, I quite like that myself. Okay, that is the end of your question there, Tanisha. If you'd like to swap places with Stuart then. Yep. 
and we'll check out his responses. Right. Okay, come up now, Stuart. <clears throat> okay. Press the big button. Okay, then. One night, you have to babysit. What do you do with the kids, Stuart? Leave them alone and go to town, send them to bed and watch the telly, or watch a Disney movie with them. Oh, I'm a sucker for the latest Disney films. Okay, that's very sweet. One night, you find a kitten <laughs> meowing at your door. Do you kick the kitten and shut yes. the door, take him to the RSPCA, or fall in love with him and bring him in? Um, I, um, be, uh, be I'll honest. be honest, I'll be honest. Fall in love with him, you softy, I'm Stu. a sucker for cats, I nearly said pussies in my cat. faithful <laughs> always? You try to be, but it's difficult. Are faithful? What's that? You're always faithful. You are too good to be true. And What's you your idea that? of a perfect Saturday night? Oh, right. Glass of wine, packet of peanuts, meal in theatre, or hit the town with the lads? Hit the town. Hit with the, the town. lads. Fantastic. Right, that is it. The tester is going to make a calculation of your chances. An optimistic score. OK, we're just going to get the print out in a minute. Let's get the ticket out. So I have the print out, then, of Tanisha and Stuart's compatibility. If you'd like to come <clears> on here, Stuart. Tanisha? Take that Kenny Rogers off. Okay, let's see what it says. Relationship test between Tanisha and Stu. This relationship has room for improvement. You should treat yourself to a romantic candlelit dinner for two, but the result is your relationship, Tanisha and Stuart, has a 75% chance of success. No, no, no. Everything you're saying about each other at the start, have you revised your opinion about Stuart then? No. No? <laughs> no, oh no, he's, he's so person? lovely, but you know. Okay, 75% chance, sure, that's not bad. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice like a two kind of it by that. Right, it's a very intriguing relationship I've got there. Now we're going to put it to the test communication wise uh. as we play a cheeky little sapping game called Bug. After successfully navigating Cupid, the, the relationship tester, this cute Saturn game couldn't be easier. I'll give them one minute to collect 14 blue pistols. Completing this task will show just how compatible our couple really are. Now, that challenge in itself would not be a true test of communication skills, so I'm going to ask one of Stuart and Tanisha to wear a blindfold and the other one to tell them what to do. So, Stuart and Tanisha, who is going to wear the blindfold? Stuart has volunteered himself with a, a large dose of help from Tanisha there. <laughs> okay, Angels, would you like to blindfold Stuart, please? So he will be controlling the bug, but Tanisha will be telling him exactly what to do, whether to move left, move right, jump, grimace, cry, whatever. Stuart and Tanisha have one minute to collect 14 jewels. Best of luck. Your time starts now. So off they go. Bottom left hand corner screen, there's a little can there. That's the energy the bug's got left. And the bottom right hand screen is the number of jewels. He's got six already in that first clutch. The communication working very well at this point, actually. Not even a slightest hint of energy left either. Time-wise, 15 seconds gone, still going very well. Got a two there. Got another two. Listen to that communication in action. This is a relationship with real potential. Two more there. He's missed that one, though. He's got it now. 10 jewels, oh, a little bit of a hit there, you can see the energy juice going down. 10 jewels, 35 seconds, four more jewels to go, that's all, they could do this. Always hit again though, that energy bar's quite low, it's one more hit and they'll get, there, that'll be it, it's over. He's coming down, it's so close, they've only got four more to get, there's, there's some here. That's 11, that's 12, he's gonna watch, he's been hit again. 13, one more to get, it's desperately close. And they've done it, that's 14, 56 seconds. Stuart and Tanisha have won the challenge! Yeah. You have, come on down! Congratulations, well played! Fantastic <laughs> effort! Stuart then, comments on <clears throat> Tanisha's directions? Um, no comment. When she told me to go left, I went right, because she doesn't know I like right from the left. Oh, thank you very much, I just won this game! Teamwork, pal. Uh, Tanisha, your comments in on Stuart's games playing? You know, every time I told him to go up, he went right, he went left, he took it all upon himself to do everything. So well, it was really me. I was going to ask you, actually, if this meant there was more chance of, uh, of you two getting closer in real life. But, but you, <laughs> you don't <laughs> seem to be agreeing on it much. But I do have to say, you have safely negotiated both parts of our oh, special yes. event, yes. which means that the special Mr and Mrs Gordon Games Master Joystick goes to Stuart and Tanisha! Yeah. <laughs> Stuart Wade and Tanisha Geronimo. 
There's far, far too much love floating around here. Now let's return to our formerly bitter, twisted, sardonic selves with today's feature. <laughs> Mortal Kombat opens tomorrow in a bizarre video game movie is very good shock. This is mainly due to weird movie specialist and kill to blow from Highlander, Christopher Lambert. What you're about to face is vastly more important than your ego, your enemy, or your quest for revenge. You have embarked on a sacred mission. You have been chosen to defend the realm of Earth in a tournament called Mortal Kombat. Christopher Lambert, top smouldering French actor bloke and the star of Mortal Kombat 3, and I'm actually in his bathroom for no apparent reason whatsoever other than to have uh, a wee chat. Uh, Chris then, tell me, was it, was it a bit of a laugh then to do Mortal Kombat 3? Yeah, it was great. It was great. A lot of, uh, a lot of action, a lot of effects, special effects, digitals, computer graphics, and humongous sets. And I would say for the first time a movie being adapted from a video game with a story. What was, uh, what was it that made you want to do the film in the, in the first place? Was it, was it the, the action side of it? Well, no, the, the, the thing is, I mean, the, the, the producer, Larry Kazanoff, bought the rights to Mortal Kombat to make a feature. What's, what's good about him is that the guy produced Terminator 2 and True Lies, so I knew that the movie was going to be of a high-quality standard, which was the most important for me. There was obviously two fantastic-looking women in the film, yeah. Bridget Wilson and Teresa yeah. Soto. Uh, did you fancy any of them? No, but they're gorgeous, like gorgeous robo babes. Let me go! Stop! I hereby exercise my right to challenge. I challenge. You are a coward, sorcerer. Stand and fight. We had a deal, remember? Mortal Kombat continues. I'm simply changing the place. As we agreed. No! 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 Obviously, Mortal Kombat 3, lots of violence in the film. Would you call yourself a violent man? I don't think the violence is the answer to whatever. I mean, if you want to fight with somebody, I mean, you can fight with words. You don't need the violence. And I believe words are much more powerful, much meaner, and much more dangerous than any kicks and... Uh, and, uh, and um, punches or whatever. Okay, now uh, we're going to actually put your skills to the test. We're going to actually have you playing Mortal Kombat 3, the game. Uh, so we can't obviously play it in here because it's uh, a water stroke electricity hazard type situation. So we'll move it and we'll start playing the game. Come with me. So we've moved to Chris's living room and he's about to play Mortal Kombat 3. He's going to be playing as Shang Tsung, the uh, bad guy, his opposite number in the film. So best of luck, Chris. You start your challenge. Thank you. Now, we've actually played the game until the final bout there to save a little bit of time. Just about playing Shang Tsung there in the kind of uh, black revealing top of the mustard pants against Sonya Blade there in the green. Chris, we're making a very good start, actually. If we take a look at the energy bars, we well, see Sonya's in the top right hand corner there, quite low, quite full of red. So, Chris was doing very well, actually, here for a top acting blow. Missing the farmer there, though, and Sonya follows up with a leg suit, but that's another good hit. Our energy is very low, though, Sonya's. And then, are we going to see the fatality? That's yes, it. indeed. Fantastic display, Mr. Lambert. Let me shake your garlic hand there. Thank you. Yes, he has proved once and for all that Christopher Lambert, not only is he a top French acting bloke who drives fast cars, he can also play Mortal Kombat 3, and that's official. OK, that's more than enough prime television entertainment for one evening. We have to go. But remember, life is a lot like a passionate phone call to your loved one. It's good to talk, but nothing beats a great cooked breakfast. Bye-bye. Smells like a Scotsman.